In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the present value of a delayed perpetuity. So let's say you're trying to value an investment that's going to pay $100 every year forever, but the first payment isn't going to occur until three years from today. So the way you'd go about valuing this is you first calculate how much that perpetual stream of cash flows will be worth two years from now. Okay, so here's our stream of cash flows. The first $100 cash flow starts three years from today. And we're going to calculate the present value of that stream of cash flows as of two years from now. Why two years instead of three years from now? Because remember that when you use the formula for the calculating the present value of a perpetuity, it's assuming that that first cash flow occurs at the end of that first period. So we want as of two years from now, what is the value of that perpetuity? And then we're going to go and say, okay, whatever number that is, let's go and discount that to today's dollars. Okay, that's going to be step two. So let's get to it. Let's say, so we're assuming a discount rate of 5% here and our cash flow is $100. So when we want to calculate the present value of that perpetuity as of two years from now, it's going to be equal to $2,000. So basically we're saying, look, it's an infinite stream of $100 cash flows occurring every year. But as of two years from now, that infinite stream of cash flows at that point in time, right? Two years from now, at that point in time, it will be worth $2,000. So then if we say, okay, well, at this point in time, it's worth 2000 but that's two years from now. We now need to discount the 2000 back to the present value, right? And that's just, a, we just treat that as we can use a formula for a present value of a single cash flow at that point. So you just take the 2000 once you've calculated that, right? That's the present value of the perpetuity, right? You take that and you divide it by one plus the discount rate to the nth power where n is the number of periods, in this case, two. Right, because we calculated the 2000 and then say let's discount that back two periods. So we take the 2000 divided by 1.05 to the second power, and that gives us $1,814.06. And that is the present value, that's the value in today's dollars of that delayed perpetuity. Now, don't make the mistake. You have to be very careful. When some people do this, they go and they calculate the present value of the perpetuity, but then they would, when, when they're calculating the N here, they would put in three instead of two because they say, wow, it doesn't, the first cash flow doesn't occur until three years from now. So they would use that three. But remember, as I said, when you're calculating the present value of a perpetuity, that's assuming that first cash flow is going to occur one year or at, at the end of that first period. So that 2000 is the value of that perpetual stream of cash flows as of two years from now. Okay, so you make sure in this example here, you'd use two where a lot of people would mistakenly use uh, three for N and they'd get the wrong answer. Now, there's another formula. Instead of doing this two-step approach, if you just, you could collapse it into a single formula. And if you like formulas and stuff, this might be a little easier for you to think about. You could just say the present value of a delayed perpetuity equal to the cash flow divided by the discount rate, which you remember, this is the formula for a regular perpetuity, and just multiply that by one divided by one plus r to the nth power. It'll get you the same place as this two-step process. Uh, it's just a, a faster way to do it if you if you know the formula. So we'd have 100 divided by uh, 0 0.05, which we already saw was $2,000. Multiply that by one over uh, 1.05 uh, squared, and that will give you the same answer that we had before, $1,814.06 is the value of this delayed perpetuity in today's dollars.